Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel here. Christian Shriver back with you today. So, I did get a lot, and I mean a lot of inquiries about the CSL Direct Drive on this PlayC Challenge and what I was running for a Newt Mirror base, what I was running for uh, power and all that. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get this final video out because I actually have something that is now literally right beside me in my room that I'm about to build and about to uh, do a review on as well. So I'll get more into that when the time comes. But for now, this is literally one of the last times I'll ever be able to use this PlayStation Challenge as you're seeing right now. So I thought it was only fitting we give it a proper review and a proper you know send off here. So this is the uh, review I think uh, a lot of people have been asking me for and wanting to see. So here it is. Um, the PlayStation Challenge and the CSL Direct Drive together as one. And also, uh, I am running the V3 pedals as well, so I can say you can tighten those things up and they would work just fine. There's nothing really to say about that. But I did get a lot about the base itself and like how it would work and if it was worth trying to work around and deal with. And I could say firsthand and fully that after using this for well over six to eight months now, I can say yes, that the CSL Direct Drive and the PlayC Challenge can go hand in hand just fine. Now, I'm putting the footage up you see right here to show you guys how it handles with a round wheel and then a formula wheel. And then I'm running at 60, I'm actually running at about 80% peak torque with uh, about 6 newton meters in total, uh, roughly there. I decided to kind of use that because with what I'm using from a base and my wheels, I don't necessarily need too much strength. And some of these races you'll see as I'm putting on the screen right as I've got on the screen right now, has got a lot of torque to them, and they are making the PlayStation Challenge kind of jiggle around. But even then, you could run it at a full eight new mirrors. I've actually got a NASCAR wheel that I tested out with it, and it works flawlessly just fine. Uh, actually, really good for drifting too. So, but for those that are worried or wondering, you know, how much flex is this thing going to be and is it worth trying to take the risk i could say firsthand fully that yes it will flex but i honestly do not notice or even feel the flex actually when i was recording this footage here i didn't even know like the place challenge itself was kind of rocking around a little bit i thought honestly i was just feeling the weight the shift of the car in the wheelbase itself that was making me you know kind of jiggle around a little bit or kind of move in so i didn't even know about that till i recorded uh this footage you see here so uh what does that end up being the result then for you guys well again with the placey challenge you've got to realize that you are going to have a little bit of a dip in feel you're going to have a little less fidelity in terms of grip and handling because you're not going to feel as much of it but even then I would say you won't really notice it until you really start to dial it in. And it's something naturally you can get used to, like just like the Logitech G29 or 920, 923, and even the Thrustmaster T150, 248s, uh, T300s. You can test those and you can see, you know, kind of what I'm talking about. Like you get a little bit of that flex on these kind of bases, like the Placey Challenge and uh, the next level racing uh, FEGT Lite or GT Lite and all of them. But even then, I would still argue you're really rarely going to be too troublesome or have to worry about it so and of course get into a bigger um, mountain base as well that will definitely help out down the road so and you can always with these places challenges you can always mod them to reinforce them a bit so but with that being out of the way though you can see in the footage here i'm actually running uh, two tracks and two different cars now i chose these tracks and cars to show you how bumpy the road texture is and i can feel everything on the road still i'm not having troubles there and my, even my my wheel is giving it to me really good feeling towards it so i'm feeling every little bit and ounce of those bumps curves and turns and you can even see when i get into the wall some of these conditions like the hickory mirror speedway there with the street stock um that was kind of like what I wanted to see. I wanted to see if I could feel like the edges of the curves and the turns and as well as like when it shifts and the weight distribution of this car of these cars and these of these machines is absolutely flawless. The got to give the credit to Fantex for their CSL direct drives as well for kind of shaping the market up for a more dynamic market instead of having to worry about just the DDs and DD2s. So, but nevertheless, um Really, like I said, I've got two different cars here. I'm using the Dolera IR18 at Long Beach uh, Street Circuit. That is a very bumpy road texture and circuit as well, a surface that you'll be really hard-pressed to not have to deal with once in a while. I really have to get around. So that's extremely good to see as well, like how much flex I'm getting off this base as well as how much even the, the seat itself is kind of moving around and I, i'm not a small guy either i'm six foot one i'm almost i'm 220 pounds right now so um the base itself 
without a doubt, in my opinion, handled well. It did not move or flex. I have not had any of my nuts or bolts get loose either on this thing. It has not moved an inch since I've got it, and I bolted it down. The only thing I really have changed on the base itself is just changing out the quick release, which, um, for those at home that don't know, the QR light is that plastic one, and then the club support quick release is the metal one. Um, I'll probably maybe do a review on that and a video on that sometime. But, um, but beyond the point here, the Placey Challenge and CSL Direct Drive can work hand in hand, and full eight new mirrors without a doubt, no trouble. Just depends on how much power and how much you want to use will determine on how much flex you'll see, but you're not really going to feel too much of it, I would say, until you really, like, get this thing, like, cranked up to 11. Like, you say, if I'm crash getting crashed out or on a dirt track and, like, all of a sudden just everything just kind of turns on me. But I wanted to focus more on the asphalt side with the, the bumps and road textures and curves just to show you, like, just what that will do. So, but even then on the dirt if you're drifting around like it, it'll pretty much do kind of what other wheels would do like the t300 in them it will kind of give you a little bit of that uh, less lost fidelity but that's not going to do too much to you if you're not worried about it so yeah um that's kind of the whole review and that's kind of the whole process i wanted to keep it short and sweet because honestly this csl direct drive on the placey challenge is really nice and it's not bad at all so if you are on a budget uh, I mean, this one and the Next Level Racing FGT Lite, I would say you probably have to go with those if you really are on a budget, but you still want a bit of that direct drive feel. I mean, it'll handle five near mirrors, no problem. And eight near mirrors, in my opinion, yes. I, I know there's some folks out there like Boosted Media and even Sim Racing Garage and um, Carl Gosling. Uh, shout out to them for their videos as well on these on these video on these uh, chal on these Placey Challenges, Next Level Racing GTs, and the CSL direct drives. Because um, without them, kind of, I wouldn't have been inspired to do this. But this device and this machine, honestly, it will work just fine. So, yeah, depending on what you guys like and what you want, I'd say this is absolutely a much-buy purchase. And I think it can actually work still in 2022 as we roll into 2023. So, if you're on a budget and you still want to have something that you're getting further into sim racing and you're not, and you're trying to be a little bit more of uh less amateur and more trying to get into a veteran of the sim racing world then yeah absolutely look into this i'd say it's worth it anyway guys thanks so much for your time appreciate the support and i'll talk to you all later when i've got new reviews coming out bye now